on the last vlog I had said I was going to do a review of my Tesla Model 3 after having it now for two months. I didn't get around to it towards the end. I wasn't 100% sure of some of the things I wanted to say, so uh, I indicated I was going to then push it off towards this vlog. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. I was going to initially have it at the end of the vlog, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right out of the gate here for you. If you're considering buying a Model 3, some of the things you might want to be aware of. Now, I actually considered Googling other reviews on this issue and then kind of basing my review off that, but I said, you know what, no. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you exactly what I think without doing any research so it comes directly from me. Obviously, you can do your own research if you're going to consider uh, doing what I did, and that's buying a Tesla Model 3. Once they dropped the price to the $35,000 mark, I then decided to pull the trigger. I'd been wanting to do it for over a year, uh, but when they made that decision, I jumped on it and then ultimately ended up paying more than the 35 because I paid the extra 5000 to get the mid-range version, which gives me about 240 miles of range um, on a 90% charge. So I'll uh, give you a couple things that I like, a couple of things that I don't, and then a recommendation for you here. So let's start with what I like. The first thing is fully electric and extremely nice to drive. Now, obviously, um, I have said this before, but... I've been a believer for many years that all cars should already be electric. It's better for the environment. It's simply more efficient. I mean, it's kind of to me like, why would you want to buy an iPhone that runs on AA batteries when you can just buy one that plugs in every night and you always just charge back up? I mean, it's just so obvious. It's ridiculous. And that to me is kind of a comparison to what it would be like still driving gas-powered cars. It's just the way it should be, it's the way it's going to be, and it's just the best technology out there. The acceleration on this thing is amazing, by the way. I love that. I'm not a huge car guy, I'm not a guy who wants to drive super fast, but it is really cool. If for whatever reason you ended up in a spot where you were trying to race like a Corvette or something, I guarantee you, you're smoking them in a Tesla Model 3. It's unbelievable. The 0 to 60 on this thing is just remarkable and it's so smooth and obviously doesn't make any noise when you drive. It's just the coolest thing out there. I love the minimalist interior of this car by the way. You can take a look around. You can see everything is confined to just the middle console screen. All the controls you'll need are right there with the exception of the, the couple of knobs on the steering wheel itself. Uh, the left one you can use for skipping 15 seconds ahead on a podcast, which I love, being a podcast addict. Uh, the right one you can use for changing the speed of your cruise control, uh, and that's really slick when you're like me and you're constantly using cruise control. And then you have the uh, turn signal and the actual uh, gear shift on the left and right side of the wheel, respectively. And that's basically the entirety of your controls outside of the actual monitor in the center of the car. There's so much on there, by the way, I couldn't even begin to talk about all of it. The Teslas are the safest cars out there. You don't have to just take that from me. You can do your research on it, but trust me, it is definitely true. Even have cameras all around them, which um, are used for the auto drive, but they're also used for if someone breaks into your car, they can record it, which is the way it should be. Give you that extra sense of security. It's got sentry mode enabled on these things. So that's a very cool feature as well, and obviously it is the future. I've been saying that, and I'm going to continue to say it. Um, well, you're living in the past, if you ask me, if you're going to buy a new car and it runs on gas. Buying one that uh, is electric is not just better for the environment, but it's simply more efficient. All right, let's get to a couple things I don't like about the Tesla. First of all, it's just very low to the ground. Um, that's maybe a thing with the Model 3 if you were to get the Model X or probably the Model Y, it's going to be higher up. But when you get out of it, you're pretty low to the ground. If you're a bit taller, maybe it's not the best thing, but not a huge deal when you're in the car, to me, is what matters. And it's extraordinarily nice there. Uh, insurance rates will go up a bit when you buy it. They, uh, that's been proven to me. Didn't go up by much, but it went up a little. I think that's ridiculous because, as I mentioned, they're proven to be the safest cars out there. But um, the insurance does go up a bit whenever you buy a new car. Uh, and I think that's because crashes are extremely costly. I have not gotten in one yet, but I'm told that um, there's just not a lot of shops out there that fix Teslas. So if you do get in a wreck 
it's going to be more costly, probably more of a pain to get things repaired. So I'm not exactly sure how that works. I know here in Reno, they just opened up a uh, an actual Tesla shop on South Virginia Street that you can take them to. Um, I know more and more cities are going to have them. They're going to become more and more commonplace, but with electric cars still being a very small percentage of the cars on the road, it's going to be harder to get them repaired. But of course, you have so many fewer parts to get repaired. There's no engine on these things, so maintenance is at a minimum. Obviously, no oil changes are necessary, so uh, your repairs, while rare, can be costly if they're needed. Uh, and then the other thing that I don't love is the fact that the range reading that you have here is just the absolute best you can get. It's not necessarily what you're going to be getting. Now, I don't know exactly what that's going to be, but if you have, like, the air conditioning on, um, you know, it's going to go down some. And part of me thinks that even if you don't have the air conditioning on, you may not be getting exactly the range reading that's on there. I don't know how much less it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be that much. You know, I don't think that if you're 100 miles away from the nearest charging station and your range says you have 130 miles, I don't think you're not going to make it. But I do think if you're 100 miles away from the charging station and your range says 105 miles, that might be dicey. So always charge up whenever you get the opportunity. The recommendation that I have for you if you buy one of these is simply buy the auto drive when you get the car. I did not do that. It would have cost an extra 3000 to have the auto drive when I bought the car. What they do is they then give you a month free of the auto drive after you buy the car. And then it's $7,000 to add it on after the fact. And after driving it around for that month, I realized, wow, this is amazing. I should have this. Um, but now I don't want to give them the $7,000 out of spite for the way they do that. It comes already installed. There's no changes needing to be made on your car. They just have to flip a switch on their computer that says you have it. And by the way, the updates for auto drive will just download automatically to your car from the Wi-Fi at your house. So you don't even need uh, to worry about things changing in the future. Those will be downloaded in and your car's just gonna work from there. So that's definitely the cool thing. So um, I would highly recommend joining the, uh, the Tesla movement, if you will. Um, whether it's with the Model 3, which is what I have, or the Model Y, which is now coming out. I know that our boy Jeff Boski told me that he's on the list. He's already put down a deposit to get the Model Y. Um, so uh, that's another one that I'd recommend if you have a lot more money than the Model X would be for you. That's the $70,000 or something in that range SUV. That's uh, also from Tesla. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of different things you can do in terms of add-ons to make uh, these things better. You know, the... Uh, dual motor all-wheel drive, which I did not get, is also an option for those of you that might be in the uh, driving in the elements more. So a lot to say on this, but I don't want to spend this entire podcast talking about the Tesla. I want to drive the Tesla down to the poker room and see what's going on today. Oh, but then I found out after he passed away, he had a quote-unquote poker problem. And I had no idea, so I think she was thinking he was getting all caught up in sort of the degeneracy. And I remember in my family, they're all like, don't lend, don't lend Harry. My dad's name was Harry. Don't lend Harry money. Listening to one of my favorite poker podcasts as I pull in here to the Atlantis, as you might have been able to hear there. Poker Stories by Card Player. I to give credit where credit is due to Julio Rodriguez, who hosts that show. He is a great interviewer. As opposed to some people I hear on Poker Podcast, who I won't name, but uh, I remember hearing Michael Haig interviewed after the whole incident on, uh, I think, Vlog 21 or 22 at the Venetian with the Fight. One Poker Podcast had him on, and that guy cannot interview at all. He gets Michael Haig on there, and he's like, so... I'm just gonna leave it up to you, so go ahead and uh, take it away. Like, no! Ask a question. Unreal. Uh, anyway, sorry about that tangent. As you can see, pulling into that Tesla Charger here at the Atlantis. Uh, that is not a Tesla Supercharger, by the way. That is just a regular 220 volt outlet with a sign on it for Tesla and the Tesla adapter on it. So it's free to charge at those, at the Pepe Mel and the Atlantis here in Reno. If you see those, it's free. They charge at 30 miles an hour, so it'll still take the better part of a day to charge your entire battery. If you're gonna be playing poker, it's no problem. 
if you see the Tesla superchargers, which they actually have across the street here at the Atlantis, those you will be paying for, but they'll be charging at a much higher rate, probably over 100 miles an hour, which is what you'll be using if you ever go on a road trip in a Tesla. Anyway, heading up in here to the Atlantis to see this 3-5 game. Not sure how good it's going to be. All I know is that they have a game. And that's because the uh, manager of the Pepino Poker Room is currently in Vegas playing the WSOP. And when he's gone, there's like no one to coordinate the games. I've told them they should just have a cell phone that stays there at all times, so anyone there can help coordinate the games. But all that would do is make the Pepino a bunch of money, so why would they want to listen to me? Don't get me wrong, I still love playing here at the Atlantis. The problem is the game just always breaks at an early hour. Pep Mel, that's not the case. There's also often many more OMCs in this Atlantis game and not a lot of the guys who really want in the game, but um, eh, sometimes it can be okay. Well, that might be a first, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think this has ever happened in the history of this vlog. So, jumped into the game here at the Atlantis. First of all, I went in there and I was first up on the list and I got skipped in favor of an OMC who plays there more than I do, which didn't really bother me, whatever, but I ended up wasting an hour waiting to get in the game. Then I get in the game and it's pretty lousy. There's one guy who's an absolute calling station in the game and I simply cannot ever get dealt the best hand against him. So that cost me some money. With the exception of the one time I had aces, and he literally folded preflop in his small blind uh, out of turn. So <laughs> that's how the day went for me. Not a single interesting hand to report. So why waste your time? Booking a $312 loss, getting out of here, Considering watching the NBA Finals, even though I currently couldn't care less about the NBA. So, uh, that's that. I'll try tomorrow at Peppermill. It is 1 o'clock in the morning on what is now a Saturday morning, wrapping up about a 12-hour session here at Peppermill and wrapping up the month of May. Uh, it's a long day, lost a lot of small pots, and lost one pretty big pot to a pro, uh, which I made a probably a fairly exploitable fold. I was just so convinced he had a certain hand. I can't say what I have, because once he hears this, which I know he will, he'll just exploit me further. So that kind of sucked. I hope I made the right fold. Booked a $1,300 loss today and about a $2,300 loss for the month of May, my first losing month of the year. Uh, I guess that was bound to happen, but um, still stings nonetheless. So I guess that'll wrap it up for this edition of the vlog. As always, follow me on Instagram and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't, uh, don't be deterred by this losing month as an excuse to not subscribe because uh, we will bounce back and we'll bounce back strong. All right, coming to you from a quiet studio here at Colo 8 News now, as you can see, normally the time of day where we'd have a show, but since the NBA finals are going on, we don't. And we're gonna be going on after them for game two on a Sunday night. Probably one of our most watched shows of the year, that's for sure. Anyway, there was one particularly interesting hand that took place on this Sunday that I'm recording this that I wanted to bring to your attention. There's a game on a Sunday morning starting at 11 a.m. at the Pep Mill, and often it's one of the better games of the week. Uh, usually you don't find any pros in it. I was running really good on the day already. I had picked up aces against kings, and I had uh, I was already up probably close to 1,000 on the day. Um, but uh, what ended up happening in this particular hand, we had a $10 under the gun straddle. 
we get one call and I'm going to plus two. And I'm on the button with Ace Jack of Hearts. Natural raising spot here. I make it 40. Blinds fold and under the gun. Not a guy who's going to fold too many hands in the first place. Definitely not when he's already got $10 invested, so he makes the call. The limper folds and we're heads up to a flop that comes highly above average. Jack, 8-3 with two hearts. So I have top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. It gets checked to me, and I bet 50. I'm expecting the big blind, or the uh, under the gun player here that is, to call me with a lot of hands. Instead, he check raises me. He makes it 215. Now my only question is do I re-raise right now or not? Ultimately, I decided to just call because I figured that uh, I'm gonna be betting him off a lot of his bluffs. And make no mistake, he will have a lot of bluffs if I do that. So I make the call, and the turn comes the ace of diamonds. So I have top pair that now turns into top two pair, still with the nut flush draw. Under the gun leads out with five black chips. He bets 500. And now I have another decision. Do I jam all in right here, or do I wait and see what happens on the river? This is a guy who will definitely run it twice. In fact, he actually makes that exact comment while I'm thinking about it. And not that that really plays much of a role, but it's definitely possible that I beat here. I mean, he's representing exactly, I think, the way he would play pocket threes or pocket eights, which I can't block if he did have them. So even though I have a ton of outs to beat those hands, I would still be behind. And running it twice would definitely be a something that I would like to be able to do to try to uh, reduce the variance in this spot. Ultimately, I also had to think about if I shove it all in here and I have a hand that I'm dominating, will he call me? So there's a lot going into it, but I just figured that it was a spot that I had to get all the money in. So I decided to shove it all in. Ultimately, it was about a $1,700 bet because I had him covered, although not by much. So we're heads up to a river with now just under $4,000 in the pot with one card to come that we're running twice. And I'll tell you what happens on the next vlog. <laughs>